Hello, it's the eccentric professor, Dr. Mira Reisberg from the Children's Book Academy with a wonderful picture book for you all, Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear, written by Lindsay Malik and illustrated by the brilliant Sophie Blackall. And you can see here, it's a cold cult winner, which is a huge deal in the children's book world. We've got this wonderful wraparound cover. So we, and she really introduces this beautifully to the story. I'm going to be focusing primarily on the illustrations because we have a bit about the text in the blog post. So in the wraparound jacket here, we meet um, Harry Colburn, who's the, the, the man who adopts Winnie, names her after Winnipeg, where he's from. And so we see him here. We see his leg, we see Winnie. And then on the back, we see Christopher Robin of the Winnie the Pooh fame books. And throughout the narrative, we learn how Christopher meets Winnie. And it's a, a wonderful story that includes war, relationships, animal care, all sorts of things. Check out these gorgeous end sheets that lead us into the book. And then we open up to this glorious full title with beautiful text and then we just have a little hint of Winnie right up here in the tree and then we start off with the author telling her son a story and you can see how she transitions into from the end sheets into this opening and thus the story begins it's really quite brilliant I'm just going to share a few pages because I'm trying to keep this short. We learn about um, Henry Colburn, who was a vet in the First World War, and then how he goes off to war. And I just want to point out how we've got the passage of time shown here through these three panels before going into this closer up of the train and the train station, which is where Harry meets Winnie and buys her. Then here we see the panel device used again, which is a little bit like a graphic novel, as Harry goes through, you know, the process of figuring out whether he can do this or not. And so it increases the tension. We see him walking around here. And then finally he decides to do it and he buys Winnie. So then the story is taking Winnie to Europe, England, and here he is with his fellow soldiers from all over Canada. Look how brilliant this is, you know, as it goes off to war. How just beautiful. She's got these great diagonals here, which really help balance out the horizontals and verticals. The same with the ship here. Notice how the anchor's on a nice edge. And then this leads us forward of Winnie on the bow there. The water spots here, they add dimension and they also increase our sense of just how miserable war can be. But then we see Winnie and she's so gorgeous and you realize he needs to, he can't, you know, can't leave her there so he takes her to the zoo. We see this fabulous landscape and here's, you know, this wonderful emotional moment and emotion is so so important in kids books in any kind of literature really other than you know certain kinds of non-fiction very factual stuff here we've got this little girl who's very curious and the baby's curious too and somehow this tempers the sadness of the moment on the page and then we transition we've got this fairly close up and then we go and then we go far away to this wonderful overview of the London Zoo. It's pretty fabulous. And like some of the text is just so wonderful, like this. <coughs> is that the end? That's the end of Harry and Winnie's story, I said. But I don't want it to be over, said Cole. Sometimes I said, you have to let one story end so the next one can begin. How do you know when that will happen? You don't, I said. Which is why you should always carry on. And 
notice how few times it says he said, I said, and it's still able to be really clear who's saying what. Oh, and then these little spots throughout of the author and her son as she continues telling him his story. It's very masterful and very complex. And then here we meet Christopher Robin. And it talks about his relationship with his little bear and not knowing what to call it. And then here he meets, he meets Winnie at the zoo. Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to point out is the color shifts as well. So it's pretty limited palette throughout. And then when we shift, it's a, a very different palette. And that's something that you can do in your own work for those of you that are children's book creatives. And I mean, this could never happen now, but back then. And then Cole asks what happens to Harry because you want to bring it back to the beginning. And you want to make sure there's no loose ends that aren't tied up. And I just love how Sophie's done this brilliant tree here, this family tree. And then we bring it back to the beginning of the story. And here she's showing the album. And then we go into the album and we see all this historical material. And Sophie actually went to the London Zoo. She did a tremendous amount of research. And here's Carrie Coleman and Winnie. And then the sculpture that was made of them in Winnipeg. And then here on the back end sheets, we actually see the author and her son, who's named Cole, after Harry Colburn. And it's really just very, and here's this beautiful spot image with the bios. I mean, I think it's just a really, really masterful book. And you see how Sophie has made it look very much like an old time photo album, even though this would have been put together in Photoshop. Or maybe the art director did that, I'm not sure, but it's really fabulous. So there's plenty of reasons why this book, Finding Winnie, won the Caldecott Medal. And I hope you'll check it out because it's absolutely brilliant and I love it. Okay, that's it for now. Bye.